My name is Kevin Doe. I'm a current sophomore advisor in Terman Hall, and I also serve as the Residence Life and Residence Hall Association liaison, um, where I attend the weekly meetings that RHA has in Terman, and I help them facilitate program development and execution. So I'm a sophomore advisor in Terman Hall, which is a freshman dorm. My name is Pooja Dhruv. I am a Residence Hall Director of Terman Hall, and I'm also the Office of Undergraduate Education Fellow. So what that means is that I work with the Scholars Program and the Office of National Fellowships and Scholarships. In your own words, describe what a living learning community is. So a living learning community is an environment in which a diverse group of individuals who share a common desire to explore a theme live in. Um, so Terman's theme is citizenship, so uh, we were all selected uh, based on our desire to learn more about citizenship. Living learning and, communities are basically like our themes that the halls work around. So I think it's mainly for freshman dorms, although there are a couple in upperclassmen housing as well. So for example, our my dorm, Terman Hall, is citizenship themed, which means that us as the staff are responsible for creating some programs um, around the theme of citizenship um, and citizenship at and it's how, up to our interpretation, so citizenship at Emory, Atlanta, um, just a part of the dorm, etc. A living okay. learning community is somewhere not only where the students live, but it's also where they actually gain like an educational experience by living with their peers and their, maybe their RAs or their essays or their supervisors like me. They're getting something more than just a space to live in. How is your residence hall different from a typical college dorm? Um, so I think two basic things would be the size of the hall. Our Terman has a capacity of about 130 um, compared to much larger dorms at other universities. Um, but also the staff that lives within Terman. Uh, we have eight sophomore advisors in addition to the five resident advisors in addition to our residence hall director. So it's full of resources for residents to live in. But also the fact that it is a learning community, or a living learning community, um, where we all have a baseline um, desire to, to learn more about citizenship, whether... I would say that our residence hall is different from a typical college dorm, especially at Emory, and especially in the freshman dorms, in that a lot of our social groups are um, formatted around who you live with in that dorm. So at Emory, I think a lot of people make their friends um, around who they live with, especially their floor mates or their hall mates, um, versus getting them in classes or through clubs and activities and such. My residence hall specifically, our theme, our learn living learning community theme is citizenship. So it's really different from most of the dorms, I think, across the country because we really focus on one theme, which is citizenship. And our residents throughout the year go on multiple programs, they take courses, and they engage with their RAs and essays and their peers continuously on figuring out what citizenship means and also how to become a better citizen of not only Emory or their, you know, closer community, but also just of broadly, how to become a better global citizen. What role does social networking and media in general play in your everyday job and duties? So, um, from day to day, I definitely am an avid user of, uh, user of Facebook, um, much like everyone else. Um, we have several different groups for Termin. We have a hall group where I can communicate directly with all residents of Termin, but then we also have a group um, specifically for my floor, the third floor of Termin Hall, where I can um, post flyers, uh, send out reminders, and just check in with residents. Um, but we also have uh, residence life for the staff members. Um, we have a series of um, web portals that we go to um, for reporting. Um, we submit weekly reports in which we kind of like assess how we've done throughout the week as a sophomore advisor and um, ways that we can ask for help. And we also have um, programming development forms where we submit program proposals and evaluations um, that assess our performance for those types of things as well. Okay, so I think uh, a main way that we all, that whole staff communicates every day is through the GroupMe messaging service that we use. Um, so we can, one, just talk with each other and use it for bonding purposes. We can use it to tell each other about programs that we're thinking or like talk about ideas for things. 
um, as well as to alert others to when things are due. And so, for example, our RHD, which is the residence hall director, so it's basically like our boss, uses it to tell us about staff meetings, um, when we should meet and where, um, as well as times that we have to have weekly reports due and reminders for things like that. Um, for our day-to-day, -day, it's usually we use social media to just get the word out. It's Because right now, there's so much information everywhere, like, you know, feel like students especially are getting constantly bombarded with all this different info about all these different opportunities and activities and classes. So we try to use social media in a way that can get residents in to kind of get them interested in what we're doing on campus because there's a lot of opportunities that are going on around on campus. So we want to come up with the best advertising in a way to get them to come to our event as opposed to other events that they could go on campus. Yeah, so uh through Facebook, I, if I want to do individual um, communication, I'll, I can message them or write on their wall, or I can, of course, text them, or um, I even tweet a lot of them, too. Um, so I'll message them directly, like, essentially like an email. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. I'll also use, like, Snapchat. I know, that, <laughs> I know that's kind of, like, goofy, but, like... Um, to show my presence or to have their presence be a part of me like from not constantly but more frequently than what I would see them throughout the day I definitely will see their face for maybe five <laughs> seconds with a goofy message but that also like is a way that we communicate. How do you use media and technology to engage your residents and yourself culturally and educationally? Um, so I think culturally um, we like to use a lot of like media in the form of entertainment. Uh, so I frequently see a lot of my residents and I often join in playing like the Wii. Um, so it's a time where lots of people can connect with doing an activity. But we also uh, use um, the projectors at the library. Um, we can rent them for weeks at a time and we'll have movie nights or we'll show documentaries um, or we'll just have it plugged up and like in the lounge and we'll have um, like, even if someone's like playing a game or they're on Facebook. So yeah, so we have the projector out and we all gather within the uh, public space within the hall um, to watch a movie or to uh, go on Reddit and look at random news clips and that kind of thing. So we kind of use that as um, a giant technological hub within German. Um, so I think a main way that we educate the residents is through the spreading of uh, knowledge about uh, events happening on campus and through like various clubs and activities um, as well as the ones that we sponsor. So we use Facebook for that a lot often. Um, and so we have like a, both a Terman Hall Facebook page as well as a floor page that we use to advertise um, programs and um, clubs and activities that are going on campus that the freshmen might not otherwise um, know about and that way they can get involved and you know have some fun with that um also a um, big program that i put on this year which was um right before finals i created the bulletin board and um put major study tips what to do before you take your test um some jokes on there for fun um things tips on getting good sleep and things like that so that was usage too so I think first is just information, getting the info out there. So I guess education in a way. And also another way that we use it is just to stay connected to each other. I think a lot of times, especially even in a small campus like Emory, it's really easy to spread apart. Like you're involved in so many different things, it's hard to stay connected to one thing. And I think social media helps us because we can just sending it, like we have a group on Facebook, like if just sending up little comments throughout the day, like, hey, just so you know, Herman's having dinner tonight, or hey, just so you know, T3 is going to the duck tonight. It's just, is a good way to connect and stay connected. Culture of education. I definitely um, love it, the idea of having a participatory um, cultural education. Um, I think that's one huge thing that's great about living learning communities, because uh, we're not only living, we're learning and experiencing um, the world around us and how we can bring it into a more um, social environment. I think that 
living in an environment where te technology is um, heavily used encourages um, residents to be more active members of our community and become more active community members of Emory. Um, and I think that I've been able to, or at least I try to use technology as much as I can to foster growth within my residence, whether it be social growth or um, educational growth. And hopefully that's also shown throughout programming. Um, one way that I tried to implement this as soon as possible was um, during the first meeting with our residents. I asked them who is the person that inspires them the most in their world. Um, so with online research, I found images and quotes from all these inspirational people and I put them on one of our bulletin boards that we have so it's a presence within the hall um, to motivate and inspire our residents throughout the semester. So that's kind of like technology on a low level because it's printed um, form but I think that media um, is really inspirational to residents. Um, from my understanding of it I think the premise is really good, and I think the purpose to have people um, experience education fully, not just be lectured at, is great. But at the same time, the way our American culture is running right now and the way that the American education system is functioning, I think it can be somewhat of a waste of time and a waste of our resources, especially when a lot of um, kids are still illiterate or below their grade level and um, there are not enough resources to go around. Um, my experiences with such um, ideas of education have only been in um, extracurricular classes, such as like home ec or um, uh, what's it called? Tech prep. My tech prep. Okay. Woodshop. Like woodshop. Mm -hmm. Or like woodshop. Um, and outside of that, academically, I, the only times I've heard of it are at um, private schools, and that would mean giving more resources to private schools, and I think we need to focus on the public. Um, I think there are pros and cons to it. Definitely, I think that education should be more than just sitting in a classroom and getting that lecture-style format of learning, but I also think that that lecture style form of learning is important. Like you need to know the basic facts, you know, like before, like let's say we're learning about medicine. So you need to actually sit in a classroom and learn the facts, right? Like you need to understand, okay, these are the parts of the body. This is the way the body works. And the best way to learn that is by getting that lecture style form. But that's not the only way you can learn. Like, like if you're not going to be a good physician, if you're just getting that lecture style, um, like yourself learning I don't know okay right so I think it's also important to go out into the community to see what you're actually working with see how to interact with patients actually get into the hospital have a hands-on style of learning so I think you need both I don't think one is enough like you can't just go into the community and learn you need to be taught the basics before you go there